We worked on our relationship, we healed, we healed our children, we gave them an opportunity to see us growing. And that healing is, it's the first step to blending. We would be around a table, you know, mm -hmm. and it'd be the three of us. And we would set ground rules, like just allowing everybody to have a moment to speak, mm -hmm. not interrupting each other, really praying before we started mm -hmm. so that we can create beautiful energy between us. Mm, man, that's a really powerful clip. Wow. Yes. Explain to you why some of the voices that you heard in that clip, uh, Swiss Beats, um, Alicia Keys, and today's guest. Yes, the author, Mashonda Tafrir. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. The author of Blend, The yes. Secret to Co-Parenting and Creating a Balanced Family, a Blended Family. Yeah. Ooh, let's open it up. Come on. Yes. <laughs> you, know, you know, Mashonda, uh, uh, when I got this book, I had been hearing about the book, and I, you know, a long time ago, I realized I have a blended family. Mm. And for years, I didn't know, and I would go, oh, it's four of us. And then my dad has a daughter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've seen Jada Pickett Smith talk about, you know, the bonus and step and, you know, use these key words. And, mm -hmm. you know, as years go by and uh, this book was so needed, you know, it's like a current book, like a handbook Definitely. to for people who are out there trying to figure it out. And thank you for first of all, thank you for figuring it out and putting it to paper because mm -hmm. your life has been on on social media has been like public. Yes. You know, so congratulations for that. Thank then you. welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> and I have I have to speak, um, you know, when when looking from the outside, you know, I I go, every time I see, I've seen videos of you, Alicia, and Swiss sitting together, and I know you all get this all the time, like, wow, and I use the word, that's some elevation mm. that I, I'm like very in admiration of, and let's, let's talk about it, like, how did you get here, and what made you write the book, because you could have just said, I got it, and I'm just going to make my stuff work, but you, you thought, I need to share this. Definitely. I wrote the book that I needed when I was going through it. And I know that a lot of women, a lot of parents, caretakers, they end up having to co-parent, having to figure out ways to deal with their exes so that they can raise their children. Mm -hmm. um, the actual statistics are that 1.2 million people get divorced every year in America. And from that number, 75% remarry or recouple. So these are families that have to create new designs for their children, new family designs. And when that doesn't happen in a healthy, harmonious way, those children ultimately suffer. Right. And I was one of those children. I, I, I am the actual statistic in that number because my parents can never get along again after their divorce. And I grew up really confused and and felt like I missed a part of my childhood because of their behavior. So I was somewhat my own example to what I did not want to have happen to my son. Right. So with that, I was already fueled by that power and example. And I just knew even in my darkest moments, I just knew this could not be me. This is not the mother I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was pretty much the beginning of the inspiration. The, the bigger part of the inspiration was feeling the energy from my son, right. knowing that he wasn't comfortable in his skin and that he was dealing with our adult uh -huh. drama. Uh -huh. And I didn't want that for him. You know, Swiss Beats, um, your ex-husband, mm -hmm. wrote a chapter in the book. And he, he also he said, uh, one thing I give credit, Mashonda credit for is that during the years when we were working out how to best co-parent, mm -hmm. she never ha held Kasim from me. And you see a lot of stories all across, uh, you know, we have social media now of my baby mama wouldn't let me see my child mm -hmm. or this different stuff like that. How how being from your your mar uh, your parents marriage, was that one of the reasons what motivated you to let your son see Swiss during that time? Well, no, they never withheld me from each other, but I just knew how growing up, how much I felt like I missed out mm -hmm. on that experience with them. And because um, my grandmother ultimately raised me and she was amazing. You know, I, I'm so happy that she did it. But I always wanted to know what it was like to be in a home with a father and a mother. It still feels like a missing link. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that if I, you know, projected 
my negativity towards Swiss onto my son and prevented him from seeing him or spending time or giving him that experience that ultimately the only person I would be hurting is my son. And this didn't happen overnight uh, when we talk about, because there's so many levels. It's your dynamics with yourself, your dynamics between you and your Mm ex-husband and the new wife. And you talk about it in the book that it was only until your son's sixth birthday Mm -hmm. that you all had a meeting alone. Yes. And did you wake up saying, this is the night, I'm go- you know, I'm going to do this? Or had it been something working up that you had put on the books? Like after my son's birthday party, mm-hmm. we're going to meet out meet. So they're definitely, if, if you're truly looking to blend, there are three major steps of healing that has to happen first. And the first step is you have to heal yourself. You've got to go really deep into your, your past pain, your present pain, and really work on that. I totally recommend people speaking to professionals, therapists, doctors, and not talking to their friends or family because you mm-hmm. need someone that's that really gets it and that's willing to just give it to you raw. Um, second, you have to heal your child. You know, they lose so much security when their parent when their parents separate or break up. They feel somewhat lost. They feel like it's their fault. They just don't understand. So you have to connect so deeply with your child and give that security back to them because you have to heal them as well. And then you get into the work, which Mm. is healing that relationship with your ex. You know, put in the call, put in the text, and just say, can we talk because I think our child is feeling it. And then once that's fixed, then you can move on to the co-parent. And Alicia was the last step in this healing. I couldn't deal with that relationship until I dealt with my relationship to myself. So the sixth birthday party was a pivotal moment for us because it was the first time I reached out to her Uh and asked her to be there at our son's birthday party. And she accepted, she came, and you know it was a little awkward at first, but everyone was having such a great time. Our son, he had this look in his eyes like, they're all in the same room, wow. You know, like, you know, you could feel him like just, in his mm. skin, living his life and really enjoying it for the first time. Like, wow, all of my people are here and they're getting along. And um, she stayed after the party, helped me clean up. Like, you know, it was the first time we really hung out together mm-hmm. as human beings. Not, not, not the people that the internet had us all out to be. Like, we didn't know what to expect from one another. So... Um, that was step number one for us. As she she, she helped you do dishes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was her cleaning game like? <laughs> so silly. <laughs> yeah, the social media <laughs> takes it to another level, too. It does. You know? It does. How did y'all cope with that? Because that was a, a, a whole nother different component to mm. this, you know, as you're trying to figure it out, as you're trying to work on it. And, and meanwhile, you got all of this negative energy coming in people wanted to keep y'all separate people talk yeah. bad about her you know people talk bad about him did y'all talk that part out yeah i mean we it's so weird because you know i don't blame the public i don't blame social media because i did a lot of talking mm-hmm. i did a lot of interviews i i spilled my emotions on twitter at the time i didn't know any better yeah. you know i was in pain i was hurting i was like I wanted people to understand how I felt. Like, I wanted people to feel me. And I never once realized that that wasn't even really me. Like, that was the ego. That was the pain just spilling out. Yeah. And the worst part about it is that that stuff never goes away. You know, my son will one day probably just be like, oh, let me Google mom. And it'll come up, yeah. you know? Yeah. And people don't think that far ahead. Social media is a beast. It can ruin your life if you don't catch it and just realize that it's really all an illusion. It's the matrix. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> you know? what I find interesting is <clears throat> what you said, Kelly, because we've known each other for years, that you were a part of a blended family. And then we look at this scenario, we do see Jada Pinkett Smith, Will Smith, and how and, and how they're going, how they're handling it and seeing how you guys are a handle it, but if you look around our community, our community, who hasn't been a part of a exactly a blended family? Right? And you know, I looked at some stats um, on um, a one of a site, and it said 
only one out of every three first marriages will seek out premarital counseling, and one out of four Americans have been divorced at some time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, uh, so many people yeah. that deal with that. And I have to credit, my mother was the person who was mm-hmm. the conduit with my father and my sister and the whole mm-hmm. family. And it was me, you know, you don't know as a child, and it was like, oh, it's it's not like that. And But I credit my mother and there's strong women, yes. like my mother, like yourself, who women run run the world. They really do, and yeah. we make it happen. And Swiss is always saying, and credit in all his interviews, it wasn't me, it was Mashonda and Alicia Definitely. who made this happen. We took it to another level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you can co parent with your ex, but if you really want to blend that relationship between the mother and the new wife, or the father and the new husband, that has to exist. Right. Mm-hmm. Because there's got to be this level of harmony and peace amongst everybody. Mm-hmm. Was it difficult for him? For, for Swiss. Swiss, like, was it awkward for him? If I'm a, if I'm a man and I'm with my my current wife and my ex wife, mm-hmm. you know, quite frankly, I might be awkward. <clears throat> you know what I mean? You know I, what? Swiss is funny because. I don't think it was awkward for him. He always had this smile on his face like, yeah, you know, this is this is this is how it's supposed to be. I want all my kids to get along. I want my, you know, the wife, the, the wife, the ex-wife, mm-hmm. everyone that, you know, is a part of this family to get along. I think every man, of course, wants that. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that's the dream. But sometimes it's just not a reality. It's just not a reality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for him, you know, Men can want that, and it's great, but a woman also needs to feel like she's going to be respected in that situation Mm -hmm. and also acknowledged that, you know, she's doing it for her child, not to make that man happy, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. What what advice would you, based on your experience, you know, uh, would you give to the man who's in this scenario uh, that may have a wife, a current wife and an ex-wife and wants to blend the family what Mm -hmm. what would be the what what could a man do to help you know progress that that whole goal definitely a lot of open communication Mm -hmm. and i notice sometimes um in situations like that men get frustrated at the um the ex (coughs) and um the new wife picks up on that energy and she kind of goes with it yeah So it's really, it's important for the the man in the situation to always be positive about his children's mother. Mm -hmm. You know, don't talk badly about her to your new wife. You know, make put, just put it out there like she's the mother of my child and we need to respect her. And that's where that conversation starts because then it leaves no room for negativity. Um... And I do believe that we all got to a point where that was the conversation. Like, you know, we need to really hear her out because we all want what's best for Kasim. Mm-hmm. And that's how we slowly started to come together. Mashonda Tafera is here. She has the book, um, Blend, The Secret <laughs> uh, to Co-Parenting and Creating a Balanced Family. How do you say your last name correctly? Tafera. Oh, I said it right. You did. Okay, Wait. cool. Tracy, you got a question? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mashonda, I'm wondering... Um, have you had the experience with dating? Mm. And like, how does that work in a bringing another guy? Because it's one thing where women were very maternal, we're emotional, we yes. want to find that center of peace. But then sometimes for a guy to see another dude come in, that can be a whole different type mm-hmm. of energy. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I do date, but I had a serious relationship uh, about two and a half years ago. And it was the first time I introduced my son to someone. Uh, We got divorced in 2010, so I wanted to give my son time. I also wanted to give myself time to, like, really heal and, you know, know what I wanted from a man in my life. I'm never in a rush to just go be with somebody because I don't get lonely. I'm not, like, a lonely girl. There's always something for me to do. Um, So my partner has to be as aligned as I am. Yeah. And I did find somebody. Well, we found each other, and it was great. And he started to spend a lot of time with Kasim, and they had an amazing relationship. And I reached out to Swiss and Alicia, and I told them, there's someone I want you to meet. You know, he's been spending a lot of time with Kasim. And we had a family meeting, the four of us. And we had, like, open communication about Kasim's development. And it was beautiful. But I think the key is being with someone that's willing to do that. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of men, they don't want that much responsibility. They don't want all that. You know? Yeah. So you have to have a very 
open dialogue about what your life is, what your lifestyle is, and these are two people that are heavily in my life, mm -hmm. and if you're going to be with me and my son, you're going to have to deal with them. And right. Make sure you don't pick a rapper or something, because no, he, he might. He <laughs> might. Well, he going to want beats. He going to want beats. <laughs> you know, well, we got Swiss and Alicia and Mishanda. Can you he, sing the hook? He going to want beats and hooks. <laughs> and hooks, right? <laughs> I'm good. No, thank you. Hey, you know, is that a possibility that you guys, if, if the feeling was right, if that's some water right there, Thanks. that y'all might... Because we know you from music yes, first. Right. Y'all yes, yes, haven't yes. talked that out, jumping in the studio? I just think we've had so much other, like, real life stuff to work around that we've yeah. never really talked about You music. never talked about it. No, but maybe one day it'll happen. I think I'm seeing a Swiss yeah. next week. I'll bring it up. Bring it up. I'll bring it up. Okay. Uh, Mashonda's <laughs> hanging out. It. I'm going to co-sign it, all right? If you're, if, you're, uh, if you're living in a blended family or approaching that and don't know how to deal with it, this is an awesome book Definitely. from a firsthand experience. Everything I read about, even the advice you were getting from from friends, we were talking about what yeah. Misa said to you. Oh, Misa's the godmother. I promise you. I I grew up witnessing Misa's dynamic with Puff mm -hmm. and how, you know, she dealt with the other women and the other children that were coming along mm -hmm. and how you just see photos of them all together and, like, She's just always been so gracious. Well, the, it, but it probably wasn't like that from the beginning. Absolutely She not. had to figure it out. Puff but that's had to the beauty it. in it, yeah. though. You know, we know it's just not always roses and, and strawberries. Mm -hmm. It's like there's some a lot of dark moments. You know, I don't want people to think that they just wake up one day and say, oh, I want to blend. No, you really have to heal. You've got to start that communication. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to do it with good intention. What did she tell you? What was the best advice she gave you in dealing with a, a blended family? She always makes it about the babies. You mm -hmm. know, as long as those babies are good and they're comfortable and they know each other, then you're doing the job. You're doing the job. You're doing the job. We got a lot of people on the phone lines, man. I want to see if you can answer the questions. Um, we got Joshua from Ohio on the line. Say hello to Mashonda. Joshua, how are you? Hey, Josh. Hey. I'm all right. Hey. God bless you all. Thank you. You Morning, too. Morning, Mashonda. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm okay. So I'm going to make this really quick. Um, so I've <clears throat> been out of my relationship of eight years for the last three years. Mm -hmm. In these three years, I have not seen my children, but I have tried to communicate with my ex and trying to rebuild a situation with her that's more um more better for my children mm -hmm. and i'm trying to figure out a, a way to present more of a positive attitude towards her and to in, involve each other so our children can grow up healthy mm -hmm. i totally believe that fathers have rights too okay i mean children need their fathers just as much as they need their mothers have you gone to court at all about this um i i'm in i'm in legal process right now but the thing is is like uh she's moved out of her previous residence mm -hmm. so she's she's gone now so i'm trying to find her but i have a lawyer i've paid up my lawyer and he's telling me like you know as soon as we find her we can get these visitations set up but even then like i still have a feeling that it's not going to work out because she's very vindictive mm -hmm. so it's really hard to you know, bring the bring light to her to say, hey, look, you know, it's not about you and I. It's about our children and what they need. Well, I can tell you firsthand that the court system will deal with a lot. But what they will definitely not deal with is parents taking children out of the state or mm -hmm. removing them from their homes and not allowing parents to see them. So I would just tell you to keep fighting the good fight because... You you have just as many rights as your ex does to to be present in your child's life. Joshua, keep us posted on that man. And, and, and in the meantime, I, I, it's it's some great just reading about her experiences in this um, journey. You're gonna you're gonna find things that you that are relatable to you mm -hmm. in your situation, and see how Mashonda did in her situation, and you'll be able to apply it to yours. You yeah. know what I mean? Like healing practices. Um, you got a the, uh, the one of the parts of the book that I like is you titled it. Um, uh, I want to say the big picture, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. big picture. Seeing that big picture, Joshua, um, is really important. Seeing that big picture, something she said is even though you feel a certain way internally, don't ever express that about that uh, child's mother to that child. Yeah. You know, um, it's a couple things you could do. I want to take a couple more calls, okay? And even even the chapter that a father's perspective is really good. The Swiss really good, yeah. uh, con contributed to the uh, book as well. 
Um, he, he talks about that a lot, about, you know, keeping children away from the father, so... He's such a fun dad too, man. I just yeah. I, I, can he ask That's him? Because he's he, a kid too. He's a kid too. <laughs> Tell him I want him to adopt me. <laughs> can I be a part of y'all blended family? Oh, Lord. Let's talk about now. Jay in Indiana. Good morning. How you doing, Jay? Hey Jay. Good morning. Hey. Hey, what's going on, crew? What's Good going morning. on with you, Jay? What's your question, real quick? Look, I got three. I got I got three baby mamas, uh, and I got a total of six kids. I was married to one of them, and the one that I'm was married to, that's the one that gave me all the problems. Now, I'm engaged to be remarried, but I heard her say something about don't speak negative. But if your experience is negative, how do we not, uh, you know, tell the new spouse about the experiences? Because what happened is my fiance was like, oh, give her a chance. You know, she's a good girl, you know. And I did that, even though I knew how she is. And when I did it, she ended up doing something, and my fiance was like, oh, wow, I didn't, you know, I didn't expect her to do something like that. Mm -hmm. So we not express the, the negative thing to the new spouse about the old spouse if your experience is negative. Well, I don't, I don't think that you shouldn't express your experiences, but there's also a way to quickly move out of it, you know, you can let her know what happened. You can let her know what you expect from this person because of how she has dealt with you in the past. But then you also have to bring a light into the situation. Like, this is still my child's, my child's mother, and we've just got to figure out a way to deal with it. You know, we've got, to, we've got to make it work for our kids because you don't want to bring the kids into a home where you're talking negatively about your ex and so is your new wife because... That child still has to go back home to their mother, uh. you know, and that energy is going to travel with them. So you've got to find like this middle place. And what I always tell families is to get a mediator, get get, you know, find a doctor or a therapist that you all can sit down with. I mean, the three of us, me, Swiss and Alicia, we have sat down at so many tables with doctors, therapists, really close family members, and we just go in like they're just they're screaming, you know, there's emotions, there's like moments where we have to separate and come back together because it gets really heavy. But those those are the things that, you know, we had to do to get to this healthy place. So I don't know if you have a family member that you trust that all of you feel good about, but that's where it starts. But as far as like constantly bringing in that negativity into your home and with your new spouse, you're never going to grow from that. Get the book, Jay. Get the book, really Jay. Help you. Blend the secret to co-parenting and creating a balanced family. Uh, Mashonda, it's really great to see you. You too. And it's good to see you in this light. Yes. You know, and thank you because I think our community um, most definitely need to read this book. Definitely. Um, and, and tell uh, Swiss and Alicia, Kasim, all the whole family, the whole blended family. Yes. That Uncle Sway <laughs> said, what up? I all right. will. Okay. <laughs> thank uh, and you. if you want to reach Mashonda, how can they reach you on social? Um, I'm at Mashonda Tifrer, T I F R E R E, or at The Blend Book. Oh, damn it. I'm monetizing. All right, uh, uh, Kelly Kincaid. <laughs> yes, you can follow me on all socials, Kelly Kincaid, K E L L Y K I N K A I D. Thank you for coming, Mashonda. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> up next, we have Cuba Gooding Jr. You want to talk with Cuba Gooding Jr., 888 742 3345. This is Blended Family. Oh, gosh.